Welcome, everybody, here at The Dive. We're here to give you some brainless conversation and insight on what our potential top four slash Champions League qualifying places are going to be for the top five. Uh, this is going to be just kind of like a, a nice, raw, brainless reaction towards it because uh, there's only so much that we can dive into and know. But uh, again, this is kind of more so for a comedic aspect of it where we can kind of have a little bit of fun. Uh, and then we're going to go and review it in January and say, holy shit, we're fucking off. And then at the end of the year, we're, we're just going to absolutely laugh at most of our predictions. And you can Unless throw you... Tom tomatoes uh, at us if you want yeah. to. Then. Oh, absolutely. we were so wrong last year. So, so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, we didn't oh, even yeah. we didn't even uh, rewatch. Uh, your, your we did no because it was just basically we were wrong on everything. <laughs> Thanks, Pogba. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things happened. Hey, year, it's you know? your fault. <laughs> if you depend on Pogba, that's on you, not on him. <laughs> Leave me alone. I was young, naive, and didn't have my cherry popped until now. Uh, anyways, hey, but, but, but no worries. You thought you had one of the best second strikers in Syria as well, so. Yeah, we relied heavily on Keen as well. Uh, a lot, yeah, a lot of things but, happened last year. It's a new year, though, guys. Yeah, we were. I remember the times. I remember the times when Dash said, "Hey, Chiesa has uh, the talent uh, to to play a second striker. Let him. Sh <laughs> no, it's Dash on him to show it." Dash is I remember just those times. Right now. <laughs> okay, so Back we're gonna try to do better. Dash. <laughs> Dash. We're gonna try to do better but, this but, year. But, but, oh. Fuck but me. but I understand, I understand there's newfound hatred for Kiesa. It's because he absolutely fucked his predictions. <laughs> absolutely, that's it right there, one hundred percent it. But anyways, right. here we've got we've got uh, the Sith Lord uh, Kiesa, anti Kiesa incarnate German Dave, and then we have Canadian Dave or Maple Dave or Canuck Dave. Uh, so we're here to break it up. We're gonna go through League. Uh -huh. Uh, and then we're going to go to La Liga, Bundesliga, Premier League, and then we'll wrap up with Serie A. I'm not going to do a relegation battle because we're going to keep it a buck with you guys. We're not 100% well-versed. There's so much data, so much stuff. We might make a deep dive once the season goes on to really give a better, accurate reading on that. We're trying to focus on what the top four is, what the Champions League places are going to be, and we're just going to keep it at that because we're not going to make a two-hour video because this could waffle on for a while. So we're going to be... Short, concise. If you agree, cool. If you don't agree, fuck off. We're always right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let us um, know. Yeah, let us know your thoughts. Uh, just throw your thoughts on the on the chat or on the com chat. Hey, I'm go go to, into the, the comments, comment. man. Give us your give us your predictions, by the way, uh, uh, as well, so we can laugh at you as well. So it uh, doesn't stay one directional here. <laughs> yeah. And if you think you got game, I'll put it down in the description as well. Actually, our new. Uh, fantasy league i'll get all the details down in the description look for that if you want to win a jersey at the end of the year that's how you can go toe to toe with us get in the fantasy league it's not erotic it's it's just a fantasy footy league nothing erotic but right, boys let's do it right. france let's go let's go to league uh. france yeah these guys we're just making fun of french too how they how they speak funny but here we go <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, Dash, what do you got? What do you got for us this year? You're going to throw me on? Yeah, you're wow. going first. You're going Damn. first. <laughs> the, Damn. The, the poor guy. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, hey, so... just, just just let us be let us be honest and be short and sweet. <laughs> PSG done. Next. <laughs> And then you're next. PSG done next. <laughs> PSG done next. No, uh, I, I, in all honesty, yeah. like despite the loss of Mbappe, I think PSG will be fine. PSG will be able to retool. They've got the depth. They've got the players to push league. Oh, I'm not too entirely worried. Uh, they won the previous season by nine points. Again, they're they're a shoe in for at least a 20 plus win season unless something catastrophically happens. So I'm going to throw PSG and the next I'm going to throw Monaco. Monaco again with the second largest budget and they finished right behind PSG behind nine points. Uh, so I think that that's where it's going to be again. I think Monaco will be in there. Uh, I'd be shocked if they go anywhere below second. Um, just as far as I think they've retooled and made proper additions and they've also I think got uh, I don't want to say the most solid defense, but the only the only question would be can their defense maintain, right? Because last season they conceded 42, scored only 68. Uh, the other teams around them were in the lower 30s. So I think just depends on if Monaco uh, really, really fixes their defense. They might challenge for the title. If it's roughly about the same or a little bit better, I think they're issuing for second. 
Uh, and then for me, I am going to go and say for my third place team is going to be Lil. Um, I think Lil always is one of those teams that's up there, despite them finishing fourth last season in the qualifying positions. They had 59, Breast had 61. I, again, to no, no offense to the Breast folk, um, I, I don't see them really maintaining uh, the pace that they're in, though, yes, they tied against Juve 2-2. Lil, Lil always has a good crop of players that they always find a way to pull together and go for. So I think I think Lil will maintain maintain that fourth or that third position. And then the fourth position, I'm gonna give it to Lyon. I think Lyon recovers from the atrocious season they had last season. They have the talent, they have the depth, they have the capability. They finished sixth after almost what being relegated the first half of the season, in a sense, in the relegation zone. So I, I'm gonna go PSG, Monaco, Lille, and Lyon. Okay. Lots of L's. Right. Uh Dave. So they're they're your neighbors too. You you have a little fondness for these guys, they're, don't they're, you? They're, they're my my neighbor uh, yeah, the unwanted neighbor. No, no, just <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, yeah so I P one starting with PSG, of course. But I think it will be closer, of course, than last season. And last season already like seventy six points only. Like tight ten games, yeah, you can lose like the two games that, that, that they lost. Like it's they didn't, they just lost two two games. So that's that's really really good. But they tied ten games and uh, finished the league with only seventy six points for them. So I expect, but w- with the loss of Mbappe, I ironically think they will be around uh, that as well, and between like seventy five to to. 80 points but it will be enough for for p1 i think and after that i have uh monaco as, uh, as well on on p2 i think they will uh they are somewhat con- uh, the the second most consistent uh team the past couple of seasons they have the the biggest money pool like in france uh, after uh, after psg and great tax loss man <laughs> it's true and yeah, P three. I have somebody that Dash didn't mention, and it's our favorite Italian coach, De Zerbi. Uh, Marseille oh, on P three, Champions League, no. straight up, man. Yeah, no. I, I did it. I did that's it. That's the heel turn. No, that, 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 that's, no. that's my heel turn. But but honestly, it will be with a bad point study. I think there will be uh, underneath uh, sixty points. I think just the the rest will be so so bad, man. You so, so bad. I, you were you yeah. were with me when we trashed him for months. Oh oh, <laughs> I I was still trash him and and have fun with him. He should be second, like technically with his coaching brain or challenge this bad PSG. Nice. He should be. <laughs> he should be first. Uh, uh, he's a way, he is a visionary. Uh, he is a revolutionary. He is Roberto he is. De Zerbi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's then not four. gonna be a Mo- Monday night. Uh, Monday night is Serbia, unfortunately. Uh, no, honestly, I think he should he should fight for a second. Like with uh, with uh, Marseille had a decent like transfer window. So they spent a lot uh, of money, so technically they they should even be better than than P three. So I think, uh, and in the media as well, it will not be a good season if uh, if if he finishes P three under under sixty points. That, what that, that's the what French League. No, if you're not PSG, nobody's PSG. Pr- Pr- this is where he needs to be. My, my, my only thing, the only thing that I'll push back on is they conceded 41 last season, and did Serbi teams don't know how to defend, so that 41 is gone off. <laughs> 61. Yeah, but yeah, but none of the f- other French teams can defend as well. If you're not uh, PSG yeah, for, for 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 F6, like uh, like they conceded 32. Monaco was a second with f- 42 goals conceded. Yeah, but then you have Brest, Lille, uh, and Niche at the yeah. 34, and then 29. Yeah. I, that's that's my only thing. That's my only thing. Why yeah, I no, no, uh, stuff. My, my my thing my thing is I think they they will score enough to to make up for it. That's fair. Did you give your fourth? Yep. And sorry, and the four uh, the fourth is Lille because they are always kind kind of up there. I think uh, Lille on uh, on P4, they will do uh, get into Champions League qualification, and then I think they will get that way into the Champions League as well. Yeah, Nice lost lost too many players. Honestly, they lost their whole core. 
like one of them went to to West Ham, unfortunately. <laughs> one of them uh, went went to Juventus to to our club. And yeah, Lyon. I don't know if they got back to consistency. The their transfer window wasn't wasn't incredibly uh, good to catapult them that far up. I believe. Lance is always like kind of okay. That's why I think that Marseille can do that jump because the other ones were iffy. They spent a lot of money. They they got a, a revolutionary and a visionary now as a coach. So I think that's that's why Marseille is going to make that jump. Uh, okay, that's, I mean so that's PSG, fair. PSG, Monaco, Marseille, and Lille. Yeah, because like, because what is it? His rich, his reach is Marseille. My reach is Lyon. Canadian Maple Dave, who you got? Well, certainly going to keep PSG at the the top because it's still lopsided. We all know that. Let's not dwell on the fact that PSG is just filthy rich, and then Monaco is also filthy rich just because of Monaco. And it's it's not even that, but Dusan graced them with their presence this year, so they they have that star power really flowing through that city right now. So aura. Uh, Aura. <laughs> so uh, for that alone, I mean, Monaco has to come in second. Uh, so I mean, we're we're pretty on on par there. I'm also gonna say I'm gonna put Lil in third. Same thing. They're they're always uh, they're always contending. Absolutely, they're always up there. I agree with Dave on Nice. I don't know if they can recover after losing uh, two star players like that. So. And I'll tell you all, I'll put Marseille in number four. Fuck! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and it's not because of Roberto De Zerbi, but it's because they're the Napoli of France. And that's a bit of foreshadowing. For Serie God damn it. I hate, I hate oh, that. I hate you. <laughs> hey, you're on the Napoli boat as well. Oh. You fucking traitors. <laughs> oh, the two days. <laughs> yeah, I see yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, so that that was France. You guys spent way too much. I thought we were going to gloss over France. You you guys. Uh, uh, I, I had more 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 facts than I initially thought on France. So I, I remember. Yeah, you know way too. How do you know so yeah. much? You secretly watch. <laughs> Watches of course, the, uh, <laughs> no, of course, of course. I, 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 I watch it when I can. It's just not. Uh, I'm. I do it with all that schedule. I can't watch France as as much as I, as I want. He's a man of culture. That's what it is. A man of culture. <laughs> we. All right. Oh, well, shall we? Rich. Shall we move to the Liga of the Law? The League of the Law. Yeah, I, I have a feeling our number ones are gonna. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty I, sure I, they're I gonna be we're, we're con consistent with. Uh, All right. So, uh, Real Mbappe will win uh, La Liga. No, I mean that last season, 91 points, 29, eight and one, uh, 87 scored, 26 conceded. That is a mile and a half far from the second team when it comes to goal differential. Uh, it's it's not even a contest. Real Madrid only got better. It's their younger players are playing even more. They're developing. You still, even though the loss of Cruz might hurt them a little bit off the rip, but Chouamani will fill in. I think he'll fill that role in perfectly fine. Then you have, like you, you saw it in the Super Cup, a front three of Vinny, Mbappe, Rodrigo, midfield three of Bellingham. Uh, Valverde and Chuamene, dude, come on! That that is probably one of the best front sixes in world football right now. Currently, that Real Madrid, unless they don't give a shit about the league, that that's the only way that they lose it. But I've got them. There is a close second. Um, this one is going to piss people off, but fuck it, I'm here for the anarchy. Atletico oh Madrid god. finishing second. Oh my god! Oh I've got yeah. Atletico Madrid oh, over Barcelona. Yeah. Because Barcelona is a modern day shit show. I am sorry to the Barcelona fans that are going to watch this, but uh, you don't have any continuity. You don't know what that word means. And no offense, uh, you're going to probably run Lamal, Yamal into the ground to the point where he can't walk anymore. Uh, because that's what you do with young kids. Well, Apparently his dad can't walk anymore. Too soon? Well, ouch. Too soon. Ouch. ouch. Because that is going to be the because the issue with Barcelona is they have an old Lewandowski as their main striker. I don't believe they were able to get Nico Williams. They, they struggled with uh, getting any other transfer because of their monetary issues. And I think, again, like, yes, Yamal broke through, but like, here's the issue with wingers right now. Wingers have hot stints, hot six, seven months, and then they get stalled out. Happened to a lot of them. So I don't think Barcelona is going to maintain the consistency to challenge. I think Diego Simeone has 
perfected shit house ball to the maximum despite losing Alvaro Morata. I, I think Atletico Madrid have all the tools that they need to finish second, and I would be shocked if they don't. Um, because they were the only team that beat Real this season. So I think Atletico Madrid's going to be there. I think Barcelona is a shoe in for third out of quality. Um, and then for me, I think the dark horse, because we had Girona as, as the dark horse there, I'm going to put my stock in Real Sociedad to finish fourth. Sociedad. The reason why is because I'm picking Real Sociedad is they have one of the best midfield farms in Europe currently. A lot of really solid midfielders. Like, for example, if you look at the Spanish national team, uh, a lot of their great midfield players came from Real Sociedad. So I think Real Sociedad will have the ability to challenge for that fourth spot, and I think they'll get the fourth spot. That's that's my top four. All right, so she that I like it. That's that's an alright take. I won't, I won't get all up in arms over that one. But Dave, you got anything better for so, us? Entertain me. Uh, I can spoil you because I have exactly the top <laughs> four in Dash's order. For, oh, funny you know. <laughs> oh, for from one to four, literally. Oh boy, Real Madrid okay. for me, it, dude. It's it's evident they they're the same team as last season. Plus Kylian Mbappe. Like, what are we talking about? Like, we we know who will, who will finish first, and everybody with their oh, they bought the referees yeah, And guess what? They have the referees on their side as well <laughs> for the next season. So. Number one for me, it's clear. It's not rocket science or whatever. Their their midfield, yeah, Kamavinga is out for six to seven weeks, but dude, they have Chuamini on the bench. Valverde yeah, okay. is sitting there. Luka Modric is still walking around, and Jude Bellingham. They casually like made him a hybrid nine and ten, and Kylian Mbappe is their starting nine, and they still have that Mofo uh, jo Joselu up, fr up front. Sorry, Joselu up front who uh, cheese goals and where whenever he's needed. So they're in a great shape, man. And and it's literally the thing, the only transfer they 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 did. So they're they're in a great shape, dude. Atletico Madrid summer. I have them in P two as as well. What they did is incredible. They got julian alvarez yes they paid a bit too much in my opinion but you got the successor of of morata like he will be amazing with with griezmann i believe they will click to, together like really really good they will play off of each other good julian alvarez alvarez in open play is amazing they strengthen their uh, their defense with robin le normand from uh, from real sociedad and I think that that is incredible for them, and yeah, Atlet Atletico Madrid uh, for for me will, will even be be close to uh, to to Real Madrid in my opinion. Alexander Sirlo, the yeah, they paid as well too much, like thirty two million for for basically your yeah your bench uh, striker is a little bit much, but uh, it looks like the the, the money sitting around somewhere, but. Atletico Madrid hands hands down, in my opinion, is the is the second uh, is the second best team next uh, season or or this season because uh, because uh, La Liga started already. Yeah, Barca P three in my opinion. They only uh, got Dani Olmo. Uh, it is a great transfer for them, like considering they had only that money to spend and can't. Do shit now and the rest of the transfer window except they are they are able to sell to sell somebody i don't know there are talks about them selling vitor rock uh, vitor rock but i don't know if they are able to get rid of rid of them but that's as well like 40 million i believe or 45 something million do down the drain again like their business is horrible and yeah they're they are too dependent uh, on their young players like it's gonna be hard to keep them up, and they will have the same schedule like, like we have. Like it will be mini minimum fifty-one games, I believe, max. If they get to, we don't believe, of course, but they will play around 60, 60 games, like in, in every, uh, in all of the competitions, and it's gonna be bad for the young players. They will, like yeah. Dash said, run them, run them into the into the ground, uh, ground. Again. And yeah, Real Sociedad. Is my dark horse as well because they pretty much kept the core together. Like they, yes, they lost, uh, they lost Robin uh, Lenormand to uh, to Atletico, but 
their core is, is still incredible. Like Takefusa, Kubo is still there. They didn't lose him, mm -hmm. which I thought they would. And most important, like Zubi Mendy is one of the best midfielders in Europe. And for them, like to give him an, an extension last second and keep him from from going to to Liverpool, it's an amazing deal for them. They will be really, really good next season as well. So I have them as well on P4. All right, P4. So I have a lot of questions this year. It's this is this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated in Spain, I feel. Because Real Madrid, they're gonna try to win everything. The Copa, the league, the club, the Champions League again. What what's gonna give? The uh, the, Do, uh, the I, Copa del Rey. Yeah, that's the only thing that they'll give is the Copa yeah, del Rey. That, that's, 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 that's the one that they didn't win in the in the last years, but when they won and, Champions League and, and the, the league. And that's why I, I have just a feeling. Let's just, just play a little devil's advocate. They need they need a Copa back in in the the cabinet, right? So maybe they sacrifice the league over the Copa. Something's got to give, right? So for that reason, Diego Simeone is going to terror his ball into first place this oh. year, upset the league. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Because wow. I agree, at at, at, Letty, Damn, at that's, a, that's a huge turn. Dash, after we said, oh, there's not, <laughs> not going to be a surprise on P1. <laughs> there is it. No, there is. I mean, it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a fight, of course. But something does have to give. And Atleti is one of those teams, slow and steady. They're going to walk over the finish line. It's going to be like a point. Like, it's kind of down, down to the last week kind of thing. That, that's what we're talking. It's going to be tight in La Liga this year. Um, okay. Barcelona, sure, throw them in third. But they... They're still a, a decent team. Yes, they're a shit show. We know they're a shit show, but they're just enough of a shit show where they can still compete. They they like to teeter on the edge, and that's why we appreciate them so much because they give us content on both ends of the spectrum. But in number four, and because I'm a secret Sevilla fan, they're going to make a comeback, fly into fourth, and we're going to have an excuse to bring on Monchi's men again this year. Okay. This is that's just a selfish bet completely. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you think the the club that uh, that uh, hold up, what what was their finishing position? Because oh, they, they did they were so bad last year. 13, what did they do? Really <laughs> that's why it's a comeback year, guys. Come back. All year. right, they're not All that right. bad. They're at least I, a fifth place team. They need to be at least a fifth. <laughs> this is a VO we're talking about, guys. They deserve 14. to be up there. Let's go. This, we're not talking about last year anymore, guys. Okay. The this year, right. Sevilla, right. fourth okay. place. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on to our friends in the Deutschland, uh, the Bundesliga. Uh, mein beste Liga. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> probably I'm not the expert here, German Davis. Uh, so let's let's round this sucker off. Um, for me, for moi, because this one's technically I want it. Is it five? It should be five. Uh, so yeah, Germany gets five this year. Uh, Germany gets five, but Fat Mob didn't update it. Uh, I'm gonna say, who this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna say Leverkusen wins the league. I think uh, they didn't lose much of their core. I think they've maintained a good chunk of their core. Their coach is still there. Yep. Uh, they're gonna be there. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Dortmund finishes second. Yeah, uh, that's my money there. I think again. Though they lost their coach, I still think Dortmund has a solid core. And I think now that they've gotten that confidence of playing in the Champions League final last season, it'll help them out significantly as far as maintaining and playing at that high level. So I've got Leverkusen, Dortmund. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Leipzig in third. Ooh. I'm gonna put bad. Leipzig in third. Uh just again, continuity. They've been there, they've got the core, they'll they'll maintain what they have. And then in fourth, my fourth place team is going to be Bayern Munich. I think Damn. with company coming in, I think, again, with Vincent company coming in, the continuity, the complete, I want to say, I don't want to say it's kind of like a refresh for Bayern Munich. I, I just don't see that they're going to maintain a solid competitive streak this season. I think they're going to struggle this season as well. Uh, defensively, I, I I have questions on them defensively as well. They got I mean, rid of really, their best defender, right? So they I mean, got rid of Dillett. They can't do anything <laughs> else without Dillett. Uh, 
So, like, I mean, really, the only thing that they brought in was Hikori Ito from Stuttgart, and uh, they brought, it, and that was really the only main defender that they brought in that I see, besides Jao Paulino from Fulham, but he's a defensive midfielder for 51 mil. Uh, so I've I've got my concerns with how they're going to line up. And then again, with Vincent Company, kind of strikes me as another Pirlo. I think the Bayern Munich job is well, well beyond his his current cred- uh, credentials and his ability as a coach. Not saying that he sucks, but I just don't have the confidence because, again, they've signed, I believe they also re-signed Eric Dyer onto their defensive line too as a free transfer. So I, I don't know. I, I don't have that. And then for my fifth place slash Champions League qualification, I'm just going to throw uh, Mogden. Glad Watching back. Glad back because it's the funny one. Yes. Sure. It's By the way, I th- that's just a throw in. <laughs> I, I think it's uh, it's only four Champions League spots as of now because they will fight again at the end of the season with with other the other leagues. For I think it's just for I think for Mop is then, current, yeah, currently then. they're they're, they're right. Leverkusen, Dortmund, Leipzig, and Bayern Munich. To okay. round out my top four. Yeah. So Dave yeah. seems uh, Dave seems pretty upset that you have Bayern. Away from the top spot, what, what I do think you think? Uh, shocked. Oof, I, I'm, I'm very, very shocked, honestly, because I have Bayern Munich on P1 again, where, where yeah, where they were for the last eleven seasons, except for for for, for last season. Um, the, and Leverkusen, uh, once again, congratulations on a historic season, dude. In 34 games, they, they reached 90 points, which is absolutely incredible. 34 games. That's crazy. No, uh, I have uh, Bayern on uh, on P1. I think uh, they will get back to consistency again. Contrary to Dash, I think they will be defensively very good, and they will go, still go to the market with the uh, with the money they they earned, I believe, from the sixty million from the Delicht and Masrawi transfers. Um, there there are talks of them buying Jonathan Tarr from Leverkusen, which is why I think Leverkusen will lose a big. Uh, a big part of their spine as well, which is why I think Bayern and Leverkusen will. Uh, sorry, Bayern was third, so they won't flip position. But yeah, it's gonna be Bayern on P1. Joao Palinha is the, the midfielder that they wanted already last season, but he was too expensive back then, and now they decided, okay, I guess that's not as expensive as, as we thought because he's actually great. And got Joao Palinha as, uh, and he will be their their cleanup midfielder basically, which will help their def- defense Im- like massively. I think that that will help them. And yeah, I don't think their market is is done yet. Uh, Hiroki Ito, when when he's injured right now, the, who they bought for for thirty million, but when when he gets back into the squad in a couple of months, he will be really good for them as well. I think Bayern will finish P one on P two Leverkusen because they kept like every single uh, player uh, as as of now, except for that would like Seda Asmun for for example. Um, but they got Alex Garcia from from Girona as well. Like they they. Got a new mid- midfield piece to, uh, yeah, to to play basically. I think they will still be consistent, consistently good, but yeah, not. I think Bayern will just be that that hunch be- better than than them, honestly. But yeah, overall, same coach, same squad. May lose the defender still, but they they bought already a 15 million substitute, like just in case. So we will see with uh, with Leverkusen if they can top Bayern, but I don't b- believe so. Mm. On P3, I have Borussia Dortmund. Mm. They had secretly, in my opinion, the best transfer window in, in Germany, honestly, because the, so they got an unexpected uh, money rain again from, from the Premier League because they were able to sell Niklas Füllkrug to, to West Ham. <laughs> have you heard of West Ham yet? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they they saw they saw uh, this for, uh, like a thirty-one year old. If I I want to say thirty or thirty-one, like he's past the thirty. Uh, they they got seven seven million for for him. So they got rid of him. They sold sold Tom Rote to Union Berlin to my unlikely uh, na- neighbors of of my my Berlin club. Yeah, but they got Seru Girassi from from Stuttgart, 
for just 18 million because of a release clause. Maximilian Bayer, who we wanted, they bought him for 28 and a half million. Uh, million. Jan Koto, who we also wanted, they, they got him for, for a 4 million loan, basically. They got Waldemar Anton from Stuttgart. Like, they had an incredible transition. And I think it will help them to get some consistency again. But I don't think it will be good enough to beat Bayern or Leverkusen. But they will be ahead of RB Leipzig, who had a decent transfer window as well, I, I want to say, because they they were able to, to resign Xavi Simmons. They bought Antonio Nusa, uh, a new uh, a new winger for, from Brugge. I believe you all you'll heard of him already, like one of the best young promising wingers in, in Europe. Uh, Leipzig will be a very, very good team again, like somewhat consistent, but, but they're losing like here and there points most of the time and i think it will be the same again this season so i have bayern leverkusen dortmund and leipzig all right the man from germany on the bundesliga uh you should have this the most nailed down of the three of us i also want to point out that uh Dave suggested that we do a quick 30 minute video and we're at 31 minutes. 30 minutes. And, oh yeah. So uh, <laughs> I told I told them oh, yeah. it was gonna be much longer. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm just I, you know I, I, I always have serious. We work <laughs> for you guys. We work for you guys. All right, let me let me throw down here in the Bundesliga. So it's all about momentum. We saw what happened with Juve. U Juve was the parallel to Bayern for so many years. Once they fell, once they went for a hipster coach, it, it kind of just it flew away. So Bayern's not getting first this year. Their momentum's going the wrong way. <laughs> they, <laughs> that dash is liking it, Dave. Dave is probably just stewing, stewing over there. You gotta give it to Leverkusen. Like they're they're on the up and up. Like you said, they kept so much of their team, the core. There's so much to love about this team right now. And how could he not get behind them? Uh, I think this is their year. This is the year that Byron concedes the title. It's been so long. They it's did, it's bound to happen. Dave, they already did. They, they, they did that did. last year. They did that last year. Yes. They came third. They weren't even second. They, they came yeah. third. Sorry. Which, which just, is, by the I way, see, what, that's what, the problem. What, that's what, the problem. You just, you just assume. You just assume. <laughs> <laughs> that Bayern's going to be up there. They're not. They're they're done. Which, by the way, because Bayern finished third, <laughs> that's why I think they will be goddamn angry and will destroy the league. Yeah, and then we finished fourth. How many years in a row? Then we haven't. <laughs> we're still waiting. We're still waiting. But we can't. We can't make fun of Juve. We can't. Yeah. Juve. So it's. I mean, the the momentum isn't Leverkusen's. I mean, I I proved myself wrong and right at the same time. Yes, like you're just so used to Bayern winning. They're they're not they're done. They can move aside. They're finished now. It's it's a new it's a new era. Go sleep. <laughs> Go sleep. Yeah. Uh, Dortmund is gonna come in in second because that's just what they do. They're just second. <laughs> they were fourth last. <laughs> they're just but they're always they're always second best. You know they're always they're always like always the bridesmaid never the bride. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like they're always they're always in the mix, but they're just eh, you know they're never they they're also the fat chick in the the wedding party as well. So I mean, <laughs> that's just them. They're good. They're whatever. They're coming in second, and we'll be like better next better luck next year. Dave's like, way, at least I you get to come. Myself. I need to correct myself because uh, I'm sorry that I forgot about Stuttgart last season. Like, again, they finished in P2 by and three Leipzig four. Dortmund was fifth. So Dortmund bought themselves uh, themselves the fifth Champions League uh, spot with their performances in the, the Champions League. Yeah, but, that's yeah, it. They're they just they're there. They're always at the party, right? Yeah. But they're just, they're never going to win. So this is where I'll put in Bayern. I mean, yeah, they, they might be okay. They're... <laughs> Third place. They're good. They're good guys. They got Vincent Company though. They're like who the who the hell? Like we know who this guy is because he played. But if he wasn't Vincent Company, we'd be like, who the hell is Vincent Company? He's he's I, I think he's a pure low. He's a, a deserve. He's a hipster. He's he's if I, if listen, if Company was coaching in Italy, IFTV would be all over him. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Yeah. Pew, pew. <laughs> every every time they're catching strays 
Yeah. Jeez. And, and, and then look for them, and, look, and then look for them doing a top five coaches <laughs> of Belgium. Vincent. Yeah, Vincent. Vincent, Vincent Company was. I could only imagine if he was Italian, they'd be putting him on T-shirts right now. Oh, for sure, one hundred percent. There'd be already three different videos with him, and uh, yeah, and he'd want Chiesa, and then he'd be like the second coming of Christ because he wanted Chiesa, and he'd be like Chiesa's born, even though Chiesa would do nothing. And they'll still glaze them for like nine months until they realize they're wrong. Anyway, you realize you realize we're talking Bundesliga and we're already taking strays at Kiza. Good lord, mm -hmm. it's coming, guys. It's, it's almost there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got the third. I got to do one Real more. The way. So I, I am going to put Leipzig in there as well. I think they have another solid performance, and uh, just because Red Bull dominates the world, it's they're 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 coming for you. They're coming. For, they're coming for your children. Like hide your wife, hide your daughter. RB Leipzig. RB Leipzig. All right, guys. Obviously, I'm taking a fighter take at it this year. I took it way too seriously last year, and I did trash. So I'm taking a different approach. Yeah, um, just the energy sticks. It sticks. Yeah, the the energy drinks coming for you guys. Fourth place, Leipzig. So I had. Fuck! I already forget. I had, uh, Leverkusen. Dortmund, Perpetual, Bridesmaid, uh, Bayern Munich, Leipzig. So there you go. That is he Germany. Was, he was nicer. He was nicer than me. Nicer than me. All right. Now, now All is right. the time to not be nice. Okay. Okay. You bloody chaps. Let's talk some Premier League here. All right. Fuck. I can't believe I'm saying this. All right. P1. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I already know. <laughs> Oh my god. You we got ourselves here in P1. We got ourselves bloody fucking Arsenal. No, Arsenal you don't wins. believe it. I Oh my god. I'm saying Arsenal wins it. The reason why is I think Arsenal have maintained the core, maintained the stability, haven't lost any pieces. I think they've gained some depth pieces. I think Mikel Arteta finally figures it out this season and beats Manchester City for the title, for the Premier League title. So I've got Arsenal in first place, P1. And then I've got Man City, P2. I'm going to throw Liverpool in P3. And then I'm going to throw Chelsea in P4. Um, I think Chelsea is going to have a surge this season. And then uh, Manchester United is an honorable mention uh, up until the final day until Delight concedes a handball. And that's your top four. <laughs> I think he would do that at the second game day. It's my first first minute. His first fucking minute it's on the field. So. Uh, because I don't think that you yourself believe in Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that Manchester City will win it in Pep Guardiola's last hurrah as well. Dude, it's the, again, it's the same team. Yeah, they lost Julian Alvarez, but it's still such a goddamn incredible uh, team. Alvarez, man. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Alvarez is more of a backup. Man's yeah, yeah. Right? no, no, no. He 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 was he was the backup. I I agree. So so that's why why I'm saying it's not as big a, of a loss as 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 we think or as some people think. Sorry, I think Manchester City will will come in P, uh, P1 again, dude. You have to reach 90 points in order to beat them, and I don't think that it it is possible for somebody to catch them. Yes, Arsenal bought Carla Fury, which is why they will play for They'll win with aura. They will win game. with aura, David. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they will play with four center backs and terrorize everybody, but I still think they will like slip up here and there. And you can't afford to, to slip up in, in the title race against Manchester City, which uh, is why have... I think Manchester City, P1, Arsenal, P2, and... On P3, but closer to Arsenal than Arsenal will be to Manchester City. <laughs> and Liverpool and P3. Because I think Liverpool will secretly have a, or low-key will, will have a really, really, really good debut season of Arnest Lot, contrary to uh, another bold Dutch coach at another club that is Liverpool's uh, rival. Historically, they're still, they're still rebuilding. They're still rebuilding. They're, they're, st they're still rebuilding, but they finally got their uh, center back centerpiece. Um, so, uh, Liverpool uh, on P3, I think on slot will have a very good season, and still, Liverpool haven't bought a single player. So, watch out for them go going to, to the uh, Mercato as well and, and get somebody to strengthen their, their squad. But I, yeah, 
what what Liverpool will do is um, more so if they buy buy a player right now. They're they're by the way um, on on Georgi Mamardashvili uh, as um, to to sign him and then loan him out. Like they want him to be the goalkeeper of the future because right now they still have the best or at least one one of the best in Alison Becker. So Liverpool will be in a really really good shape. And what I saw from them in, in preseason already. I like Arnold Slot's playing style, and I think it will be very good for Liverpool to be a tad bit more defensively minded than they were under under Klopp when they played high energy, high pressing, and now they're a bit more more controlled in the games that I saw. And I think it will help them a lot, especially Virgil Van Dijk. Like he can relax a bit more instead of defending yeah. like at at the center line basically the 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 whole game. And the, yeah, I that's part it of it. They that team's yeah. older as well, right? That kind of. No, no, it's, uh, no, they 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 rebuilt everything. Like it's uh, Virgil van Dijk is is, uh, is right now like pretty old. Alison is yeah, 30, 30, I believe now. Oh, but see. but it's yeah, but uh, now, yeah, yeah, but the players around him like uh, Kwanzaa is twenty or twenty one, for example. He is uh, the backup to Konate, who is twenty six, I believe, in his prime. On the right side, Trent Alexander Arnold still twenty four, twenty five. I I, I want to say. And and yeah, Robertson he's... is uh, twenty nine, I believe, or maybe in his thirties as well. But their their balance is is really good. Their midfield is is really young. Mohamed Zala, you can argue, yeah, he's he's uh, over thirty now, but still his production is amazing. Like uh, at his age, like he's a beast. Yeah, Liverpool P three, I I think honestly. Van Dijk's thirty three, so yeah, he's yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's P four, a team that I thrashed just <laughs> three minutes ago. Uh, but I think, yeah, they will be better than Tottenham. Uh, do Chelsea that dumps the fire with 44 players on their squad and eight goalkeepers? I don't know. Uh, nobody knows what Chelsea's starting li <laughs> lineup is right now. Uh, which is why I think Manchester United will finish on P4. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Give me, give me menu. No, I, I don't know if Aston Villa keep that consistency up because it will be the first time uh, in infinite years that, that they will play a Champions League again. It will be five competitions because they have an additional cu cup competition. So I think it will be very hard for for, S, uh, for Aston Villa to, to maintain uh, the consistency they had last season. Yeah, they got like Enzo Baranecea. They got... Um, Sorry, I'm man. I'm forgetting Sam uh, Illing his, his Jr. Name. the goat um, from from Everton. I, Amadou Nana. Thank you. I sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting his name all the time. Like they they had they improved their their squad a lot, but they also lost Musa Diaby to Al Ittihad, who was one of their best wingers last season. Yeah, but they replaced him with Sam Illing Jr. <laughs> no, we will. I I think it will be hard for them to main to maintain. Uh, to maintain that, that's why I think Manchester maybe with a squad that is same-ish to to last season will have that bit more of consistency. And yeah, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm not putting putting my my money on Tottenham to do anything that has to do with Champions League. No, I kind of want to just throw them in there just for the lols, but I I can't. And, and behind that, you still you still have the clubs like Chelsea. Like God knows if they will sort out their their squad issues and everything. But I don't think they will be ready to fight for for the Champions League spots. They'll be there. They got whatever. I don't but know. they don't have best <laughs> young Italian coach with Maresca. <laughs> I don't know what 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 is the ranking by IFTV for for where Maresca is on that list. <laughs> It's, it's unfortunate though that the EPL isn't a better league because if they were, they could have had a fifth Champions League spot to fight for. But uh, you know, uh, they don't, yeah. so we got to keep the four. They have Cucarella. Cucarella. That's all they need. Cucurella, it's paella, and whatever the song was. <laughs> and they he's have Gallagher. By the way, he sang it. He sang it himself. Himself. It's not that I discriminate against him because he's French. <laughs> they have Connor Gallagher. I've been we told don't, that don't he is know the who goal. They have on them. <laughs> All right, Dave. Uh, can you can you trust anything from the English media or no. socials? But I mean, top three. I think we're we're pretty much all there. Man City, uh, number one. Not for yeah. that. <laughs> I know. I okay. The, generally speaking, generally speaking, top three. I'm saying here. Uh, yeah, Man City 
they just got it. They're good. They they still have Pep. Yeah, he's gonna want to go out, out with the bang. Uh, why not? It's Man City. They're gonna dominate. We're gonna hate it. We're gonna spite Holland and his stupid pale ass face. But it is what it is. I'm not Ars- gonna hate it because I want to see them succeed even more so than Arsenal. Because uh, Arsenal, if 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 you saw that, maybe I have a personal vendetta against them because they're they have the most toxic fan base out there. In the they have aura, Dave. They're they, aura. they do no, have not, they do have not aura for now. me. Not for yeah, me. Cal- <laughs> Calafiori is single handedly gonna get Arsenal into a second best. Yeah, and Calafiori. you know what? Because he's, of that aura. he's single. So. <laughs> Yeah, Arsenal, and I was kind of rooting for them last year too. I'm like, just beat Man City, just do oh, it. Yeah. Come on, oh, yeah, just yeah. like I don't care how horrible of a person team you are, just like just just do it, man. Um, and then going back to Man City quickly, they have 115 charges on deck. They this is like their last chance before they yeah. get like relegated to. That's a lie. They're going to get docked Timber five points. They're going to get docked five points, and they're going to laugh at it. It's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> relegated to Timbuktu. <laughs> That's not even what's your, far. Who's your, who's, who's, who's who's your third? Mali, uh, third. Uh, and I, I don't know because coaching changes, I'm always a little iffy with, but I'm always a fan of Liverpool and they're always there. That's why I said their top threes are pretty close. Liverpool, I think they they hold on, they do all right. They got the team, they got the players, right? Like it's, it's just Liverpool, they're gonna come in third. I, I trust. I trust they still got it. Van Dyke and his old ass will get the team to another Champions League spot. Right. I don't know what to okay. say. And just okay. it's it's their blue collarness. I think that's what it is. Like Liverpool is such a blue collar city. I, I think it's just that that aura. You can almost say, and I know they're not the Napoli of England. Aura. They're not that bad. Um, <laughs> but it's just Liverpool is that type of city, and they're just they're gonna keep on grinding it out, and they're gonna grind at least a third. They're they're probably gonna overperform, perhaps. Uh, having a new coach, but like I said, I'm just I'm just vibing today. There you go, uh, Virgil, Virgil and the boys, third place and fourth. Now this is going to be the troll team of the season. It's the Hammers, Hammers, fourth place, big up West Ham. <laughs> wow! Oh my God, dude! Imagine they get uh, to uh, to the Champions League. Uh, they whatever. just. They just... They hijack uh, too too many deals. Uh, and our young players in the Champions League, then. <laughs> yeah, they would hijack the fourth spot. And hijack why, it from United. Why Weston McKenney over there rejected Aston Villa? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah, yeah, Hammers number four is that's City Arsenal. Ah, uh, Liverpool Nicholas, and Nicholas the Hammers. Striker. With Nicholas Fulkrug as a striker, my guy. Nicholas. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So that's what I meant by the top three. We're, we're pretty close. But guys we uh we're finally done with all the leagues that don't matter we're finally to our bread and butter here the most dramatic the most entertaining the most old men yelling at shit for no reason saturday uh, here we go all right so uh for mine here this is going to be to contrary belief here um sneaky good transfer market uh i have ac milan winning the league a um, couple of things. They retooled in the center back department. They added two center backs. Uh, I'm just pulling up their names here real quick. So I have them. Uh, so Emerson Royale uh, from Tottenham, 15 mil. And then they had Pavlik uh, from Salzburg. Uh, again, Pavlo- another center back. Pavlovich. Pavlovich. Uh, from Izzy Salzburg. Uh, two center backs where I think they'll, they'll be solid for them. Uh, the big thing that I think that they purchased, and uh, German Dave will have tears to his eyes, but the pickup oh, of yeah. Alvaro Morata will probably be huge because it'll facilitate balls for Leao and Mr. Pulisic as well. So, again, Fonseca, known for his wing play. Milan's got really solid wingers, probably the best wing winger tandem in Serie A currently right now with Leao and Pulisic. So that, that team offensively, I think they're going to be attractive. I think the big issue is whether or not they sort out their defense. So I've got AC Milan uh, beating Inter for the title. And going on to my number two, I'm going to put Inter uh, just because continuity, same squad, same coach, uh, same everything. I think that this season that they lose a little bit of steam, I think tactically teams will figure them out and will will make them suffer a little bit more. Though, again, I think Inter, again, they've retooled by adding Zielinski as a depth piece into their midfield. Uh, and again, they, they just have the best depth. I just think Milan kind of edges them out a little bit on flair. 
uh, more so than anything. So, I, and then again, a little bit of a trope that no one has won Serie A consecutively over the last six, four or five years since we've done it. So I, I've got I've got my stock on Inter being able to uh, push for second here, getting close but not really really getting through there. Uh, my third place team on the table, I am going to put Napoli on there. Napoli finishing third. Um, Conte, they only have one game a week. Uh, with Conte, the way that he schemes for one game a week, they're going to be physically in condition. I don't think they're going to have any issues with with fatigue or depth or anything like that in general. So I, I would say Napoli, they might not have the quality to push for the title, in my opinion. There's still question marks on Oysterman. I we are is he going to play a three four three? Is he going to play a three five two? That that's one of the question marks that I have going into the season for Conte. But when it comes to maintaining players for a one game a week competition, I think Conte does quite well. Again, Conte understands Serie A, well experienced coach in Serie A, coached two of the top two teams in the league. So I'm going to throw Napoli as a third, and then my fourth. And people are going to get mad. He based Juve. Um, I'm going to say Juventus kind of, I don't want to say limp, but they struggle to get into the fourth spot uh, for the season. They'll make top four on paper. They have the quality as far as the midfield, but again, there's way too many holes in this Juve squad, way too many question marks going into the last two weeks of the market where there's like, for example, when you look at Juve and you look at the other competitors like Atalanta, Fiorentina, Lazio and Roma, Juve are a cut above those guys, which is why I would be confident to say that they're your fourth. Um, as far as pushing higher, we don't we we've got a couple of question marks, right? Like for example, center back wise, defensively, how are we going to look? Uh, preseason defensively, we did not look great. Obviously, it'll change during the season. Offensively, again, we're struggling offensively. Our striker cannot score for shit. Uh, he is too busy with his broccoli hair. And again, depth in the, on the wings. When you're playing five competitions, you need depth. And we do not have that because, for example, if you look at the midfield roster, you have Turam and you have Douglas Luis, and then you have a 5,000-foot drop-off, and then there's Manuel Locatelli. So that, that's going to be one of the biggest concerns right now is how Juve handle the depth because you're not going to be running your starters all 61 games. All right. All right. I, I think that's, I think a, that's bit, a bit harsher than than I would be. Okay, well, let's, but, let's have Dave's um, gentle touch. So I'm gonna, apparently, I just pissed off a bunch of people, but whatever. So <laughs> funny enough, we have all the same teams, but in different orders. So starting with P1, I have Milan. Same as you. I think what Milan has done is secretly building a, a super team o o over there in, in in the city of Milano. Like it's great what, what what they have done. Honestly, they strengthened uh, their their squad where needed. Like they they got Alvaro Morata, like an old-ish player, but with tons of experience in the league, with tons of experience uh, like on the on the European stage and the Champions League, uh, on the top level of football in the Euros and World Cups. Like he has ton of tons of experience. And I think he will be like great in combination with Leo and Pulisic and with with the midfield that I still think was was pretty good, but it will help them uh, as well, like to to excel. Like, and I think offensively they will be really good. They got Strainia Pavlovic, a defender that honestly I would kill for for right now. Uh, our guy Vlad and I talked about him like or a couple of months ago. Like he's a, such a good talent man. He's a monster. He has a great, a great left foot, like a left-footed center back. Like we would have needed that, ironically. And he went for just 18 million uh, to them, which it's is an absolute steal. A, it's an absolute steal. The Amazon Royal as a backup to to Calabria is is also great. Morata for 13 million release clause. Like the 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 squad depth is amazing. The starting squad is amazing, and that's why I think they will finish. First, and I think Fonseca is a really, really good coach. Like, it's sometimes it's good like having a new voice in the in the locker room as well, and I think it will help them to to he, he, to reactivate. He to took reactivate. he took a mediocre Roma team far in in cup competition in the Champions League and as well as Europa League. Like that Roma team was mediocre, and he did a phenomenal job. Yeah, he he is he is a really good coach. So 
Uh, I I have high expectations for Milan. P2, contrary to Dash, I think we will have a really, really good season. P2 Juventus, man. Okay. So, I I think there's still work, work to be done. Yeah. But I think we are on a really, really good tra trajectory. Like, it will not be a perfect season. Don't, don't expect an invincible season or whatever. We will lose points here and there, which will get the fan base mad and everything. But in the end, I think we will finish quite comfortably in, in P2. Uh, I think there's still work to be done on, on the Mercato, but even if not, we have a group that is better than, than last season, in my opinion. If we get may, maybe still one winger, or we run the talks for two, so we will see if we get Cope Miners. So, yeah, Mercato has still like for 14 days, sorry, yeah. 15 days. So, we will see let how me, it ends up. Let me illustrate my position just briefly. It's more so not us losing games. We're going to suffer from a lot of draws. That's why I have it on fourth. Yep. No, it, it can be, but PSG showed you can f finish uh, P1, P1 with 10 draws. <laughs> oh, man. No, I look, we already had. Uh, 14 draws the, the last season that we we were we came in the third place so i i think i think it's go, it's going to be good enough for for p2 p3 i have napoli so i think napoli will have also like for for their terms a, a good season i don't know yet with all men here and there but uh, last season also was wasn't the most consistent season so i don't know if it's going to hurt too much too much losing him overall like they they had a good transfer market as well they got bongiorno they strengthened their their defense finally they got rid of ostigard uh, and nathan who cost them in, in lots of games they got spinazzola like like on a free transfer which is really good they got rafa marine from from real madrid a very young young player that will help them in the long run i believe they they had a really good transfer window and yeah, I th I think Napoli will be really good, and they already played uh, played a Coppa Italia uh, game the the first uh, round I believe or is it, uh, yeah is it the, the mm -hmm. first or second round or whatever it was, yeah. and and they played in a th uh, three four two one ironically so they went to the <laughs> to the five man backline, mm -hmm. and I think it it's gonna be really good like Spina they started Spinazzola on the on the left side Mazot Mazzocchi or oh, oh, sorry Mazzocchi. Or whatever it is uh, on, on the right side, Di Lorenzo as a right now as a right side center back. I think they will switch that around when Rafa Marin gets more playing time. But yeah, the midfield of Lobotka and Angisa do they're still really good players and up front like Faradskelia a bit more centrally with with Politano and Raspadori as as the starting striker. And maybe it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be. Osiman, we will see if he stays or not. But if Osiman is the starting striker, like I, I think they will score still tons of goals, and I think Napoli has a really, really good season in front of them and finish in P3 and P4. I think it's going to be purely because of age, the the drop off, and it's going to be Inter. I think Inter will be, uh, will be P4, and it's purely purely on age. I think some of them may may lose their legs, like the midfield of. Chala, uh, Chalanolu and uh, and those guys and Mikitarian is still in there. I think they will they will lose their feet a bit. I don't know like what the bad Euros will do to to Barella mentally. And sorry, but I don't believe that Lautaro will have the the same twenty five plus goal season that he had last season. Uh, yeah, and their sponsorship deal went to went to Atalanta, so uh, Atalanta will be into the new uh, lovable hips, hipster team and and not Inter, so they will lose a lot of their referees and uh, Serie A in turn power as well. Venezia yeah. is back. No, they they get to be the hipster team again. It's Como. Let's oh. be honest, Como's the oh. hipster team this oh. year. Inter doesn't no, get not, that. Not for uh, that, that, for Goose, yes, not not oh, for no. me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, no, Venezia is the, the hipster team because of their jerseys. But, but, but yeah. No, uh, I, I think Inter will, will have a, a rude awakening. You know, when I was in Venice, the only jersey I saw, not even in the shops or anywhere, it was on like a five-year-old kid. Only yeah. Venezia jersey I saw in that whole city. 
Yep. Uh, it, Not it's that a hipster, hipster jersey over here. Like, like yeah, they don't he, care yeah, exactly. about the jersey. It, it's here here in Europe. It's uh, it's one of the uh, one of the jerseys the hipsters Screw like those guys. But we're not here to predict hipster clubs. I suppose we could have added that in most yep. hipster club. But oh, next year. So we'll remember the Milan, Milan, Juventus, Napoli, Inter is my prediction. Okay. Okay. So now it's my turn. Ah. Oh. Honestly, guys, I hate myself for saying this. I wish they just choke on a dick and die, but Inter is going to win the league again. Uh, it's I think it's their last hurrah. <laughs> it's, well, yeah, we, we really do hope they all choke on a dick, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> this is this is their last hurrah. Oak Tree's got them tight down. That's why they made some deals uh, a few months back before you know Oak Tree basically came over and took all their money away. And, and, and also, Dave, ju ju just to go uh, go in a bit deeper on that, um, they had they had to uh, to pay the obligations for uh, for man, I forget, for for Carlos Augusto, for Fratesi, oh. for for who else uh, was it? Mm. I, I already closed uh, closed my my transfer thing, but but yeah, they had to buy the obligations for three or or four players. So that that's what killed their their transfer market. For, yeah, for they the have season. no transfer mark, but their depth still great. Yeah. It's going to be a long season, but they, I, I think they just do have the best depth in the league right now. That's going to die off after this season. This is, this is it for them. They give her after this, everyone leaves. They make all these sales and Inter turns into a banter club again, and nobody cares about them. They fall off the face of the planet, whatever. They have 24, 25, and then they can go fuck themselves. We're moving on. <laughs> Milan, for the reasons he stated, like the their off season has been great. They've been building over a couple years. Unfortunately, Fonseca, you know the the new coach curse, the debuff, if you will. There, there's just that instability, right? You know how I feel. New coaches, eh, they're they're not going to be quite there. Uh, still great team. Morata again, yeah. I mean, we we love Morata here. Unfortunately, he went to the Devils. But fuck him, um, he's one of them now. But I, I think I think Milan. Is it fair to say that of all the big teams at Milan, we hate the least? Or are we just like we're just indifferent? Yeah, yeah. we're indifferent. Yeah, you got like, also yeah. you also got to give Murata. He's gonna be getting that. Uh, I just got divorced. Buff. So he's mm -hmm. just gonna be a lot more frustrated and angry mm -hmm. on yes, the pitch that's, too. That's a good call. No. Man, I feel bad for the guy. He was so family oriented. I know. Man, that's Anyways. just weird. But but, 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 but 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 who split it like? I don't know. They said it was mutual. Weird. Must Weird. have cheated on her. I wonder if it's because he chose Milan over <laughs> Juve. Yeah, if... Maybe. Not that he really had the triumph. He, 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 he cheated on her with the Euros trophy. Oh, maybe. With, or, uh, or maybe. Uh, Yama, with Yamal's girl. No, I'm just kidding. Or maybe it was that. Oh, racist... dude, Ash. Man. <laughs> There's also those racist chants. <laughs> maybe it's because he's a racist. He's not really. The, I, I think I, that out of context. Um, the chant was. Yeah, he, he got the one game ban on. Uh, for yeah, he did. No, okay, so I, I thought it was kind of funny. They were just basically saying Gibraltar Spanish. Apparently, <laughs> the English. They they've gone and and pillaged every other country out there, and when one of them like fights back, they get offended about it. Apparently, I don't know, but we're not talking about England right now. We've already bitched about those guys. I mean, uh, we can go into the politics of colonization no. as well if you want to. No, it's fine. That's not for now. <laughs> Three hour discussion. <laughs> okay, let's move on. That, that's the next video. <laughs> In third place. Yeah, I mean that's a whole other channel, guys. In third place. Because the one coach that does not get the new coaching debuff, as long as he doesn't play in Europe, is Antonio Conte. No. And uh, Napoli comes in third. It's the Conte effect. It's a, it's a decent enough team, but Conte is just going to come in, yell at a bunch of bitches, call them a, a pile of pussies, that nobody hears a man knows how to play any footy. They're all going to be scared out of their shit and get into third place. That's Conte. That's what's going to happen. Yep. And they're going to play the worst. Allegri's gone. There's no worse version of football in oh. Serie A left. Conte oh. is it. Yeah. This is what we have, guys. That is third place for you. Napoli. And, and that does kind of tie back to how I put Marseille in. That, that was my foreshadowing that, that Napoli does get the, 
the Champions League spots, unfortunately. And I, I mean, I put Juve in first last year. Here we, here we are now, next year. <laughs> uh, arguably a better team, and I'm putting them into fourth. Uh, because I think and we're gonna I, have. I, a... I, I didn't think that I, I'm gonna be the most positive with, with you were, P2. for once. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> teach their own, but there's just too many changes. It's it's not me here trying to hate on the team, saying that we're gonna be trash this year. It's just too many new players, new coach. It, the whole the whole idea of the club essentially has changed this year. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna be a slow start. And that's going to put us behind the eight ball. And unfortunately, it's just going to be too much to yeah. kind of come back at the it's, end. It's, it's the depth. That's the question. It's it's, it's the, the depth. depth, right? It's not this team is ass and it sucks. It's more so it's the depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a big concern. I mean, our, what do we have for right backs? Like, we, we don't even know who the right back is 100% right now, right? Is Danilo going to do it? Is Cambiasso play there? Uh, I mean, we got this these new guys, these new kids, Kiesa, yeah, throw throw him in there. Fuck. Uh, I, who knows, right? That And that's the point. There's all these questions where if you look at Inter, uh, Milan, Napoli, they, they don't have these same questions at this point. So, unfortunately, yeah, I, I mean, that's reality. I'm trying to temper my expectations for this year fourth would be respectable i think and that that's uh, man fuck. i hate, it's a I hate myself like it's it's it's, 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 it's a bad, good it's, okay. it's a it's good like start it's, it's, yeah it's, it's a good start for where you are in the project it's the first year of a brand new project yeah. brand new coach brand new everything like it, it's i i think it's just not fair to have the expectations of going all in for the title like it's it's top four copa italia that's it like that's honestly the bare minimum. Top four in Copa Italia. And that's where my expectations are. That's why I put them in fourth. I think there's a lot of things that they have to do, maintain consistency. Also, how do they deal with adversity when things don't go their way? It's a bunch of things that they have to factor in and do. And, and we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen those tests. That's why I can't, I don't want to rank them higher on the list. Like, for example, Milan's core is still the same. Milan's core is still the same. Their two foundational pieces are still there. Our two foundational pieces, one has been exiled to the bench and the other guy's busy changing his hairstyle. So like that, that's kind of one of the things that I have offense. Like I, I just have a big question mark, right? Because even with, and I'm not knocking Tiago Monta here, but like, for example, even at Bologna, like with that being all of his pieces, he still scored 46 goals. It's the same amount we scored. So Conte's team is, ugly as it is they're counterattacking. they score more they're going to score more than 46 milan is going to score more than 46 inter is going to score more than 46 that's where i i just i don't know offensively and like hopefully we do get coop right mm -hmm. and, and this is where for me right now it's whether or not coop comes or not that's going to be the main factor for me but when I, I mean, by the time it, this video comes out i mean we should caveat be. that it might have happened so it might have. when you watch this but I look at it again from the offensive perspective. Like, the Inter got 89 last season. Uh, AC Milan was 76. Atalanta was 72. Uh, Bologna and us tied at 54. So I stand corrected. Yep. I said 46. Bologna and us tied at 54. Yeah, and that's they only with considered, uh, well, one goal less than, than Bologna. Yeah. Did. So. <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I'm just for me. It's and again, that was that amount that he scored with that Bologna is with his Xerxes. It is with the players that he wanted. His Calafiori, all of the pieces that Monta needed to make work. And here, it's it's still a project. It's not finished. So, yes, you have Douglas Luis, who was better than any midfielder that he had. Same thing with and arguably, I think Kefren Turam as well. Mm -hmm. Offensively, Dusan is not better than Zerk. For what he needs, he is not. Wingers, you might have a little bit of an upgrade on the wingers. That might be a little bit in the plus direction. But that's where my concerns are, is if we are able to be productive offensively, then obviously they'll do better. Again, hence why this is a preseason prediction, not a midseason prediction. And, you know, if you want to sit here and whine and cry about saying that we're downing the club, it's not. We're trying to make an objective take. If I were to sit here and say sunshine and rainbows, first place, Tripata, it's, it's disingenuous. And you wouldn't want to listen to me if I said that. Nobody wants to listen to you anyways. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's a lie, of course. Everyone loves you, Dash. Hey, hey people are here for brainless uh, opinions. So. 
Okay, I mean, now that we're at the biases, they're, the guys are a little, a little spidey because we had a comment. And they, you know, oh, no, said, uh, you know, it's uh, not spidey. We just laugh at it. No, yeah, we, somebody we called us brainless. Somebody watched five minutes for a video and called us brainless and uh, said <laughs> basically things that we said after those first five minutes in the video. It's just, it's a thing. Just don't you worry know, about funny. it. We, kind the, guys. <laughs> the first, I know the first five minutes is us making jokes about the prime sponsorship, but yeah i know we weren't even it was stuck. yeah that's was that's stupid. brainless that's the problem that yeah we're brain whatever that, that's that's, that's your bias <laughs> if anybody's brainless around here it's me because i put sevilla in fourth place and and marseille oh, and, and german matters. dave with marseille marseille in the top well four. i did that so i'm i'm double i'm double <laughs> brainless both sides of the brain are dumb done whatever come at me bro call uh, me an idiot i don't care <laughs> but that, uh, that, honest, that is the... honestly uh, i i'm mostly scared about my intern before that i will fall flat on my face for that one but i hope i hope <laughs> all right uh, but anyways uh, any like anyways. secret predictions or are we good yeah we're done okay. all right folks that's our thoughts not yours obviously if you want to have a little bit of fun and throw your a quick your one hour and 10 minute clip a quick <laughs> one hour and 10 minute discussion it'll be half hour guys don't worry it's a treat you got something to listen on your friday to get you through work so there you go the gift that keeps on giving uh from the dive uh, but anyways, folks, if you want to have a little bit of fun yourself, slap in your predictions on the comments as well, and then check back to it later in the season to see if you were close, if you're not close. Obviously, this is more for the fun aspect of it. I'm not putting any money on this, so uh, I am not a gambling expert, so nor do take my words at face value when no, it comes to these positions. Neither is for Jolie and Sandra and uh, Tonali. Uh, but anyways, folks, obviously, if you're new, uh, subscribe and uh, set your notifications also, folks, if you have subscribed to the channel, please enable notifications because you'll know when we drop new videos and new content. And uh, obviously scan to go into the Discord or you can have the discussions with the community there and all the other fun shenanigans. And the next time you'll see us is going to be Saturday for the call show. And then we shall be doing a watch along for Como on Monday. Ooh, so baby. We shall see you guys then. Sack. And uh, Fantasy League, everything, links, everything down in the description. Hit it up, guys. And thank you for watching.